welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. Sorry we've been away. It's um, just that time of year and you know yourself, just been busy and stuff like that. But here we are, continuing on with the team of the year and uh, I'm joined by Adam Whelan and Rob Kavanagh. Said that right, didn't I? Yeah. Okay. I can clip that bit out anyway. All right. And if you do make a, a, a balls away, saying I can clip it out as well. So don't be worried. Um, yeah, so this team of the year, uh, we're stuck on our centre backs at the moment. Now, you know, the team of the year, I think, I think um, the guys that got it originally are Sean McLaughlin and um, Sean Hoare. And Sean Hoare, yeah. So I think they, they're the ones who've won it. But this is kind of, this is our, kind of our picks. Uh, basically, uh, if you watch the other videos, the format basically is we choose who we think has been the best. Um, and then basically put it, um, put it to the vote. But we kind of talk about some players who kind of deserve a bit of an honourable mentions uh, and stuff like that. We kind of have a, a few players. Like for me, I, I thought um, David Webster was very good for Waterford when he played. Um, they had a bit of a, you know, a, a, a kind of, what's what's the word I'm looking for here? So they're just... Um, the cards in the back as well, isn't it? No, like the disciplinary record, that's what I'm looking for. Like, wasn't that good early on in the season? I remember when he got sent off, they kind of went on a bit of a downward spiral after starting really well. And I just think, like, obviously now he's, he's playing with Pats, um, or he signed for Pats. Um, very good signing for them. But I, I think he'd be a massive signing for them now. But just in terms of his, his you know, his role at Waterford, because he was obviously coming in there as a senior player. You know, uh, Rennie obviously uh, addressed that. You know they're gonna need some senior figures for their first year back, and ultimately it, it paid off. I mean, they got they got into Europe because uh, obviously Dundalk winning the um the cup, the the cup yeah, yeah. So it obviously the extra play. So actually it, it kind of took the uh the Rovers and and and, and, and Waterford race for kind of third yeah, out, out of the water well, really. Yeah. So yeah, I mean uh, David Webster for me will be an honourable manager. Is there anyone that kind of stands out for for you, Rob? Yeah, like the obvious ones are obviously like Hor um. And McLaughlin, but like I thought, Dan Casey at ball was like pains me to say because he scored two against Rowers. But I thought, as the season went on, like when Ian Morris went into the back forward balls, like I think he improved a lot. And I would like go out to Daily Mount a couple of times to watch balls play because it made him mind supports. And I thought he was like fairly solid and impressive for them. And he's you know, he's gotten his move to Cork now off the back, back of his form, so I'd say. He'll be a centre half to watch out for next season if he keeps it upward trend. Like yeah. Daniel Cleary as well at Dundalk. And others, he, he had a few ropey moments, maybe in the cup semi final. He got sent off against UCD, but I think in general, though, he was um, he's all pretty solid. And you know, he'll probably I think he was almost un un unlucky in the sense that uh, Brian Gartling kind of came back from injury because once yeah, Gart yeah. Gartling came back in, he was a colossus. Yeah, um, and he'd be another honourable mention. But only like, probably will be in the team of the if year. He for stayed fit. Yeah, yeah, no, he's a smashing player. He finished like, the season really, really well. Uh, he's a leader as well. You know, he's like solid as rock at the back. Like you never really see him making mistakes or you know just does the job. So yeah, yeah, I'd say those. What yeah. about yourself, Adam? For me, I don't think he can look past league race for me. I think the last three seasons he's been a mentor to the back for us. I think now, obviously with. Having Alan Manis back in net, and obviously having Trevor Clark like a new sign next year, I think we're, we'll have a solid back four. And he just commands everything back there for me. Look at it last year, I think we had a record number of clean sheets in the season for us, which is, a, you know, and I think that tells you why he was, for me, should have been up there for a team of the season at least. So, yeah, I think there's another player in there that, that started the season not really well, it was Kevin Town for Pats as well. I thought he was a brilliant sign for them. Uh, first half of the season anyway second half you kind of tailored off so the Pats performance I suppose in a way as well they, they just didn't really look like the same team and they were just going pretty inconsistent uh, results I mean one week they were beating teams the next I remember there was a period where they beat Rovers and then Rovers stuffed them mm -hmm. I think Joey O'Brien got sent out in one game and mm -hmm. then he used to beat them in um, Tala then as well yeah, it was at both games yeah um, yeah um, but yeah so Again, this it's just kind of I suppose the inconsistency factor. But if you had to kind of go three, two, one, and third being your least favorite, um, what kind of order would you be, would you be going in, uh, Rob? For the centre. Well, I suppose I suppose we have to do probably maybe four, th four, three, two, one because it's you have to pick two centre backs. So four centre. Pick. Yeah. So if you had two that two that would start and then two. No, like so, two who would basically be on the fringes but wouldn't be in your team. Yeah, or fair enough. Um, 
Yeah, I'd say for me anyway, we'd say Dan Cleary. And Casey. Casey, yeah. I thought they were like I know I support rowers, but like just for me sometimes league race is good, but I think sometimes you can get caught out on the ball and he takes too much out of the ball, bringing it relax, out of the relax, fence. Relax, relax. <laughs> That's not just being honest. Like a lot of people said, the matches do the same thing. Sometimes he's been caught out at the back, like yeah, just, yeah, just being brutally honest. Like you know, like, being like, being like he's like, but he is a smashing player. So yeah, I'd say Cleary, Casey, and then the two lads that got into the team, like McLaughlin and Salas. He was probably the big, only consistent part of Cork's back four really all season because they were chopping and changing all year. With like that guy Connor McCarthy, then Damien Delaney came in and. Dunleavy, Ben, Shane Griffin. So he was the one kind of one that was kind of there for most of the season. So, and then yeah, Sean, you can't really argue with that. You know, like cup final scores the scores the header that gives away the penalty. Yeah, but he played like but he was solid as a rock. Yeah. Obviously, and he can play it right full as well. And he got played more when he played that position too. Yeah, like so I think for him as well, like you can't really argue with the two lads. Like they were the most consistent centre halves in the league all season. Yeah, and the fact that like you know. Dundalk ultimately you think would struggle without Sean Gannon and then obviously he stepped in yeah. showed how good he actually was but Adam if you had to pick like say two in your fringes before you had to pick it uh, I think the two that just slightly missed out for me probably be Webster and uh, McLaughlin maybe because McLaughlin he's still young so and I think he probably will get better probably this season and the year after and Webster you know obviously he's time at Rovers as well he's good but be a bit rash I think at times with his, his red cards and stuff but I think for me the main two probably I'd have to put Grace in. As much as, yeah, he does make the odd mistake, but you know what Fender doesn't. And probably yeah, you could don't think you can go past Sean Hall with Dundalk, probably the solid season for them. Okay. Scoring goals and obviously that one of the cup final which made them win it, so Yeah. Uh, my two would probably I I'd probably I'd probably actually be in agreement with uh, yourself, Rob, on all four, to be honest. I I'd have Casey and Cleary. Um, I thought Casey was was brilliant all season. Obviously, has you know warranted his move to Cork, and I think I think he'll improve that defense greatly. I just, I just think he's even watching him playing like he's not a hoof hoofer of the ball. He can play football as well if needs be, you know. And um, and he's only young, like he's twenty. I think he's only twenty. Yeah, like, he's know. only like him. And, uh, I know he's mates with like Dylan Watts and all those types of players. They're all a kind of little uh, bunch of mates and stuff like that. And um, obviously. He, um, James Talbot now he's obviously off to go and to um, think, but they're all kind of in a circle of mates mm-hmm. they're all a very good talented bunch but I do think that you know if he has a good season I could probably see him going back over to England um, maybe uh, in the summer um, if, he, if, he, if he does well even for the first part of the season because I thought again you look at how Bowes finished the season they were very very strong you probably don't want to hear that but oh, no, they were no, yeah. they were probably I think they were the most informed team outside of the Rovers and from Dock. Yeah. So it just shows you like they how strong. And how, they how much of a young team they had as well? Because you remember you had JJ Looney in there as yeah. well, and uh, Leahy and stuff like that as well. So they did. They have a pretty young team. Unfortunately, they're kind of all kind of have to break it up now. But, um, Dan Dan Kelly as well playing with them as well. So there's a there was a good young core there as well, and they kind of mixed. I thought Keith Long mixed it very well, but yeah. I'm sorry, I went a bit off topic there, but yeah, from going um. Casey and Cleary Cleary just misses out because he just didn't play the full season I think if you're going by the first half he would have been my number one pick but it's just kind of how the, the season uh, panned out and as you said Sean Hoare and we spoke about how he won player of the month at right back just to show how good he was he made he made it kind of impossible for Stephen Kelly to leave him out even with Gartling coming back and you know Cleary had to get dropped you know so yeah um, and then Sean McLaughlin obviously young player he'd been, t- been touted still might go uh, to England apparently you know Casey was signed as his replacement but uh, imagine the two of them playing you know centre half next season for Cork uh, the only thing is they have to sort out the other end but yeah uh, I think well that's the way it's going to be now, Sean Hoare is definitely in there from all three um, myself and Rob are in agreement on Sean McLaughlin Sh- yeah Sean McLaughlin so uh, unfortunately Lee Grace uh, will have to take um, a fringe spot here but uh, yeah, uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments. Uh, do you agree? Do you disagree? Is there someone that you would have uh, in there in- instead of the lads? Uh, let us know in the comments. Uh, don't forget to download our sponsors app, uh, Taxi Twenty Four Seven. 
who are actually running a competition on that at the moment uh, on our Facebook page to get a new Ireland jersey signed by Andy Reid. So if you are interested, head over. It'll be in our posts and have a look for it. All you have to do is send a screenshot of the app downloaded onto your phone and like Taxi 24-7 halfway caps. Thank you very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV. Have a great day.